please a thunderous round of applause for Honorable Bajabi Amila. His Excellencies, all present here today, the Royal Fathers, Baba Conde. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on protocol as already established. It was uh, actually very late last night, I think after the football game, that Mr. President called and said that I had to represent him here today. And so I was able to scribble down a couple of things uh, for this very, very epochal event. Perhaps, and I believe many of you here, unless of course you don't live in this geographical space, will well imagine that this is a, a topic for which, of which I am absolutely very much interested. The menace of social media. Yes, indeed, it is a societal menace. For many of us, you will understand that once you hit that send button, the potential to reach millions of people all around the world poses great danger, not just to the society, but even unintended consequences to the individual who's at your receiving end, including security of life. The question that I normally ask is who do you hold more responsible, the purveyor of the fake news or the person who reads it and believes it? The jury is out on that. Who do you hold more responsible? I'm glad that um, listening to Toyosi earlier on today, she did uh, mention the need for a regulatory framework. Perhaps that's a change in mindset. I remember as speaker, when I was speaker, I attempted to do this. The Ninth Assembly attempted, but we were resisted very vigorously by civil society. I guess the chickens have come home to roost, and I believe we're all on the same page now, that social media is a menace, and it must be regulated. Let me go straight to what I was able to scribble down, and once again say good afternoon. I am delighted to be here this morning on behalf of His Excellency President Bola Abed Tinobu GCFR who has asked that I represent him here this morning and extend his best wishes and fondest regards to the author, Babatunde Raji Fashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, to the publishers, and to all who have made this book and this gathering today possible. We are living through one of the most fraught periods in modern history. The world is, cha is changing all around us, the international settlements and underpinning the global order since the end of the Second World War are being renegotiated in real time across Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Amidst this global turmoil, we are at home confronted by difficult policy choices and decisions that must be made to ensure our children's future and our country's prospects. Now, in this historical moment, as we confront and overcome the challenges that threaten our future, we have an obligation as leaders in politics and government to engage in evidence-based discourse and data-reliant decision-making as a matter of course. But as citizens interested in the issues of state and governance, the obligation is even more significant to ensure that our engagement with each other springs from a shared agreement on what truth is, what is real, and what isn't. We live in what some observers have described as a post-truth world, 
This is a world where nothing is real. Politics is fueled by em emotive arguments, and objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to identity and personal belief. In this new world we find ourselves, public discourse is driven by alternative facts, dropped with reckless abandon on social media and technology, including artificial intelligence tools, allowing for the creation of false realities to confuse and deceive people and distort perceptions of what is real and what isn't. The challenge we face and must meet head on is how to return to having a public discourse and a political and, a political and policy decision-making process that overcomes this new paradigm. We must, because if we cannot agree on common truths and don't exist in the same reality, then we cannot develop the shared values and the common purpose that is, central, is a central requirement for cohesion and national identity. My brother, Raji, Babatunde Raji Fashola, has set out to address this challenge in this book. In his usual style, he has approached the subject with an abundance of scholarly rigor, bringing his considerable intellect, wealth of experience, and passionate patriotism to a critical subject matter that has been too long ignored. In this book, he has research and data analysis to help us develop a more nuanced understanding of the nature of the problem so that we can better understand how this challenge hinders the course of our nationhood and what we must do to recover and change course in the interest of our beloved nation. Those of us who know Babatunde Fashola are not in the least surprised by this undertaking. Throughout his public service, he has made it a point of duty to seek out and try to solve the thorniest problems and the most difficult tasks. This book is part of that legacy and is evidence of a continued determination to be a part of the solutions that advance the course of our humanity and ensure the progress of our nation and her people. On behalf of Mr. President and indeed all the Nigerian people, I thank you all for your efforts, sir, most especially. I am confident that the insights of this book will enlighten, influence, and improve our public discourse. It will impact the way we make decisions in government at all levels as we strive collectively to meet the promise and overcome the perils of this critical moment in our nation and in the history of the world. I will endeavor to see that as many of my colleagues and friends as possible receive copies of this book so that they too can benefit from the insights contained therein. I am honored to be here today. I thank you once again for listening. God bless you. Thank you very much, Honorable Bajabi Miller.